Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, my friends. Today we are talking 10 essential tips to know in Melty Blood type Lumina. For many people, this is their first Melty Blood and it can be a little overwhelming, so hopefully these tips can help ease you in. Now, if you're a true beginner, I do suggest looking at the beginner's guide we made on the channel. You'll find that linked at the end of this video as well. But that said, let's start with tip number one. Our first tip is making use of the freedom of attacks that the game gives you. You can customize your block strings, your attacks, anything you would like, right? Because the game certainly, like many other anime fighters, lets you go A, B, C, as far as attacks go, light, medium, heavy, but it also lets you go C, B, A. You know, heavy, medium, light, or you can go light, heavy, medium, uh, medium, light, heavy, whatever you want, right? And as long as you're not doubling up on moves, you can do light, medium, heavy standing, light, medium, heavy crouching. And in any order you want. So make it to your benefit. So let's look at this block string here. I'm gonna go crouch light, crouch light, stand heavy, crouch heavy, stand medium. And what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna get punished. Because stand medium, it's just not a good move to end on, right? A lot of negative frames. But I didn't use my stand light yet. So after that stand medium, if I see everything is blocked, because I certainly have enough time to assess if I got the hit or block in time, right? If that's all blocked, I'll just go into my stand light and end it off there. And as you can see, now I had tons of time to block. And in fact, I can do more than block. I have uh, quite a few options available to me. I could backdash to get out of the way. I could do something invincible if I knew they're going to attack right away after the fact. Or I can just even shield it, right? Like uh, anything uh, you can think of defensively, you're able to do. And of course, if they don't try to take their turn right away, well, the whiff's really quick and then you can just whiff it and then merely go back on the offensive as well, right? So use all this offensive creativity and freedom to your benefit. Don't just get locked into ABC and then stop from there, right? You can do so, so much more. In Melty Blood type Lumina, many moves can be held for additional effect and you should really explore a lot of these properties. So for Vlov, we have Jump Heavy. As basic as basic gets, right? Like it's just a jumping normal, right? But it can be held and all held moves will have that green flash just so you know, right? And his held version forces you to bounce on the ground. So already immediately, if it were to connect, we could get a little bit of a juggle combo. That's interesting. And it's also very important for combo structure itself. So if we can catch the enemy uh, with that in a combo, for example, here, let's try something like this. So there we go. We got that combo specifically because it spiked them down to the ground. If we use the regular version, not gonna work, they're way too high up, right? So that simple fact of the fact that we knew that the charge version spikes the enemy down, that makes a world of difference for combo structure. And that's just one of many, right? Uh, let's take uh, Vlov's Rekka series here. So that's the starter, but if you were to hold it, it just smashes the enemy. And if you happen to be near the corner, that smash becomes a wall bounce. So all of a sudden, combo potential can become very different, right? To take a look at Vlov's projectiles. So he can shoot his fireball. And if you hit the button twice, it shoots two. A second one comes out. However, if you're to hold the button after the fact, it'll shoot two fireballs. So it'll be three fireballs in total. So you can think of it almost like a free EX move, a free special move that you normally have to spend meter on, right? Uh, and it's just all added bonus. All you have to do is hold the button. It'll take a little bit longer to come out, sure, but otherwise it's all upside. This is the case for a lot of characters and a lot of moves. So let's set our dummy to block everything. How about that, right? So action, guard, all. And we're gonna do Kohaku's level three super. Bonk, obviously you get blocked, right? But if I were to say, hold it, hmm, how come it hit that time? Because the held version changes it from a hit to a command grab, straight up. So now they can't block it, they would have to jump it. 
and jumping it, uh, especially early on the frames, might not be as advisable depending on where you are, and we'll talk about that later in the video. But that is how important the held versions of the moves are, that they can widely change the properties, like turn one from a strike to a grab. That's a very big deal. Give moves new properties, bounces, wall bounces, multiple projectiles. It's so different for every character. Please explore these options. Now, directly on the back of the last tip, talking about exploring your options, make sure to make good use of the simple command list because it'll give you properties of the moves you might not know, like right here. So her back moon skill, magical amber missile. That's this guy right here. So it regularly would hit as normal, but as it states here in the command list, oh, it turns out you can jump cancel it. So after the hits are done, I can still jump. I can maintain my jump property. So now I know I can do this. It connects great instead of landing and, you know, trying to use like a light or something to connect with, but you can. I can jump cancel into my charged H, which we talked about earlier, because her charged H is also a ground bounce. And then, turns out we can get all sorts of combos as well, right? And get a little bit more damage than maybe would would have originally got, right? And we know that, thankfully, because the move list, it tells us. Uh, before, when I was going through stuff, I would have never known this move specifically was jump cancelable unless the move list told me, and it does tell me. So thank God for it. Keeping on with the command list here, okay, uh, oh, hit one of the attack is an overhead attack. So that's the old punchy cactus. That's what we call this guy in the industry, right? The old punchy cactus. So if we now, knowing this, right, we try to recreate uh, the scenario. All right, enemy will guard all and they'll crouch. And we'll do this here. Oh, and it turns out, yeah, the part where it's about to hit the ground, they had the stand block that. That's great to know. So now I know I have easy on-demand overheads. So basically what I'm trying to get across here is no matter what character you happen to be, just look at the move list. Like looking at the motions is great at all, but look at what additional information you might learn from this because it might be pretty critical and you could learn a lot from just this simple stuff. Now this next one isn't directly gameplay related, but it can absolutely have an effect on gameplay. And that is simply, there is macros. You can set your controller to a various sets of macros this is a four button game, but you have a lot more than four buttons to work with and please use them. Uh, so for example here, I'm playing on an arcade stick. I have A and B set to circle on my arcade stick, right? So A and B is the dash macro. So let's you dash and all that kind of stuff, right? And the beauty of it is, you know, that way you don't have to hit forward, forward, back, back. It is simpler to press forward and the buttons than it is to press forward, forward. It just simply saves you time. And what's easier than forward and two buttons? Well, forward and one button, right? And same thing, uh, back one button, back dashes are invincible in this game, so a very strong defensive mechanic. Like say the enemy knocks me down, I wanna back dash out of there, right? Now, if I wanna do it normal way, I'd have to like mash back, 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 and like kind of burn out my wrist. If I wanna do it the other way, I gotta mash and hit both buttons at the same time, and due to the fact I'm mashing, maybe there's a little element of imprecision and maybe there's one point where I didn't hit the buttons at the same time and I can screw up my back dash. Or I can just hold back and mash circle and I'll always get it. And I didn't burn out my wrist. I didn't do any of that kind of stuff. There's no element of mistake. It just simply gives me the easy stuff to work with. And much the same can be said for a lot, like throw. And this game throw is A and D. I have this bound, once again, I'm on arcade stick here, to R2. So I was just, one button. I don't got to press nothing else. It's just a single button press. Uh, stuff like instant air back dashes, instant air dashes. I just hold up back or up forward and hit circle. I don't got to hit two buttons at the same time. I don't got to do it the old fashioned way of up forward, forward and that kind of stuff. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but these macros here, it can just make life a lot easier for you in the end. So I highly suggest you give them a shot. Our next tip is an important note about air blocking in this game. So it's an anime fighter. We all, you can tell by looking, right? So obviously enough here, anime fighters have air blocking and all that comes with it. But the big thing to note about this game versus some other anime fighters is you cannot block grounded moves. So while you're in the air, you can block other airborne stuff, that's fine. You can block projectiles, that's fine. But a simple jab on the ground, can't do it. You cannot block 
grounded moves while airborne. So basically being in the air is uh, sometimes a lot deadlier than you might think it is otherwise. So say we have this big old uppercut here, right? Arcade has a massive uppercut. So if I catch you in the air at all, I can rest assured knowing you cannot block this move. Now, yes, you can shield. You can still shield grounded attack. So that part is there. So if the enemy knows you're gonna do something like that uppercut we talked about, well, then they can shield through it pretty as you please, right? But otherwise, it's actually pretty hard to block in the air. So if you come from other anime fighting backgrounds, like say a Dragon Ball Fighters or something like that, just keep this in mind that ground to air is pretty deadly. The only option is to shield out. Otherwise, you cannot defend anything from the ground while you're in the air. Our next tip has to do with your super activation. So I'm talking both your regular meter and also your moon gauge because they both have very strong defensive properties on top of just you know, entering your mode and getting all the benefits. The easy one here is the regular super meter. So when the enemy's attacking you here, if you are to enter that mode, you can do it on block and it's basically a counter and it'll get them off of you, right? So it's just an easy pushback. Now the pushback is not safe on block, so it can be baited, but it's a pretty easy get off me button for the most part. Now, the one that isn't as obvious to work with here is the moon skill activation here, your moon drive. Because the moon drive activation is 100% invincible. You cannot be hit out of it, and you can block the frame you leave it, meaning you're completely safe. So when do you want to use this? You want to use this in situations where you simply don't know what's coming next. So let's use this as an example here to showcase the power. So the enemy, they're going to throw us. And they're either going to empty jump and then hit us with a low or right before they land last possible second, they're going to do an air dash and smack us in the head with an overhead, right? We don't know which one's going to be which. But if we wake up and just activate moon drive, oh, I can see the beginning of the air dash and I can just block from there. Now I know they're committed to the air dash and it's really as simple as that. It's just there to give you a second to breathe because it stops the screen while it's going on and you can see what is happening during that time. And of course you're invincible, so you're safe. So you can react accordingly. So if you're stuck in a situation where it's a high block or a low block guess, you activate, okay, you can see where the state of the screen is and then change your block accordingly or conversely, you know, like mash an invincible move or something, right? Uh, if that's what you wanna do. But this is just there to give you those precious few moments to breathe. That is one of the strongest things about this activation. So let's talk overheads for a second here. This, unlike some other games, you know, there's no universal overhead mechanic, and there's definitely feast or famine when it comes to certain characters and the ability to mix up, right? Some characters just don't really put out much in the way of overheads other than just jumping, right? Uh, but jumping, that's very seeable. That's very reactable to be sure. So let's give you a somewhat universal way for everyone to have a low to the ground overhead. So it's complicated yet it's not. It's really basic once you start thinking about it, but the setup might seem a little bit much at first. So first you need to be running. And if you gotta be running, the enemy probably should be knocked down, just so you know, just so you have time to set up the run. Uh, it only has to be like a frame of run. It doesn't have to be this big complicated thing. From your run, you're gonna wanna jump forward. Now what happens here specifically is a regular jump forward versus a running jumping forward. The running jumping forward has a lot more momentum, naturally enough, right? And then once you're running and then you jump forward, immediately cancel that running jump forward into a back dash. And from back dash, well, you can do any old air normal, as you would think. So if you do it normally in someone's face here, if you were like jump up air back dash, you're not really in range as you can see here, right? It's just not really working out for us. But if we do our run, jump forward, and then backwards air dash immediately, see that? See how barely backwards we go compared to a regular air dash? Because of all that forward momentum from the run and the jump forward, it just keeps us in place on top of the enemy. And from there, there you go. This is how you can overhead the enemy while being reasonably on top of them without a whole big jump. This is pretty much universal throughout the cast. Everyone has this option. So if you don't have your easy bake overheads and all that kind of stuff built in, this is something. Everyone's got lows, so you don't gotta worry too much about that. Everyone has lows to work with, but not everyone has decent overheads to work with. So this is a way to basically to use the game mechanics to trick the game 
into having a reasonably decent overhead against everybody. And of course, from there, you can convert and get whatever combo you want. So try it out. For characters with not so great overhead potential, this is definitely something that can help out. Like even big old man Vlov, he can benefit from this as well, right? He definitely doesn't really have much in the way of overhead potential, uh, but using this technique, it'll give him something to work with. It's not the fastest overhead, but you can definitely catch people sleeping. So if you've started on your journey of Melty Blood type Lumina, you probably know all about the shield and the fact that the shield can punish all sorts of things, right? And you probably already know, by now anyways, have learned about the shield war, where any move, if I get shielded, I can cancel back into a shield myself, and then I can go for my attack, which at which point they can shield it and attack me, and then I can shield it back and so on. And just going on forever, right? So the thing about the shield wars, here's a couple notes. One, the old counter war here, the shield, doesn't last forever. It can only go for about 10 maximum exchanges, and at which point the next thing's just gonna automatically fail and you hit the enemy. Now, another thing to note is you can bait certain aspects of the shield war. So if they do A or C, the basic attacks here that launch, right? You can just shield, do it back, and they can do it back to you, so on and so forth. But if they were to do the B move, if you shield right away, you're gonna get hit. That's not gonna work. What you have to do at that point is delay shield. That is the only thing that's gonna save you. And of course, naturally delay shield, you'll get smacked by the A or C, right? So there is a layer beyond that. If you're just trying to get past the mash war, at the very least, the B option will get past people just mashing it. The only way they can stop it is by the delay. If they just do it first thing possible, they will get hit. And it's a fatal counter as well, from which they can combo from. That said, there is the BC attack. So if you hit both B and C together, you'll do a bit of an invincible flying up move. It does take some of your moon drive though, just FYI, it's not free. But that will beat basically both options. So if we do this here, it goes for the basic launcher, that'll beat that. And if they're going for the B version here, if you do it fast as possible timing, you'll just get out of dodge. And if you delay it, well, then you'll just straight up either clash or beat them. But either way, you'll keep yourself safe. You'll just get out of the predicament if you don't want to deal with it. So we talked about the shield wars, right? And shields going back and forth and all that kind of stuff. But beware, there are scenarios where you're not going to be able to counter shield. The shield guarantees true punishes in quite a few situations. So if I go like, you know, stand B, oh, he shielded, I'll shield and go from that, right? Let's try this scenario here while I'll use one of my moon skills. And uh, mash D as hard as I can. It's not happening. Why is that? Because if you shield a moon skill, there is no possible way out, period. You are screwed. The shield will guarantee a punish. You can counter shield and do shield wars and stuff like off normals and most specials, but you cannot do it off any moon skill. And more to the point, you cannot do it off any EX skill either. Anything that's like a super move, like a one bar super and EX, the shield parry and the follow up from it is guaranteed. What about shielding a level three super? Guaranteed, there's no way out. I can mash D as hard as I can. I am just done for. And that goes for everything. You know, your big fancy level four supers, same deal. So anything that is a moon skill, an EX skill, a super move, a, a arc finish or a last arc or level four, any of these that get shielded, that shielded is guaranteed. So you're very heavily incentivized to shield these moves because you get a guaranteed punish because they could be otherwise safe or, you know, just you can defend yourself some way somehow. And against these ones, you cannot. The shield is guaranteed. That also includes any moves that happen to be in any way, shape or form invincible. So a regular special, you can shield, but an invincible special, you are done for. So keep that in mind. So if you are really prone to like spamming wake up invincible moves, you can get beat up really bad by the shield. So the shield is extra strong against all these kinds of moves. And our final tip for today is about shields and how they're not the be all end all. 
I know a lot of people earlier on in the game's life, maybe you're watching this video six months from now and everything's solved, I don't know, but earlier on in the game's life right here, people are struggling with shields just because they think they're a little too strong. But I'm here to tell you there's a lot of weaknesses of shields. So first up, a weakness of shields is simply a shield, either the crouching or standing version, cannot shield behind itself on the regular base version of the move. So if I were to put you in a situation that would cross you up right after the shield activation, you're gonna get hit. That was a punish, it said punish on the screen. You're gonna get hit. So just beware right there, off the top of everything, right? A base shield block, either crouching or standing, will not defend you from the cross up. Uh, you will get hit. Now the held versions can defend you against the cross up. So if you are holding it, I can attempt to cross you up, but the held version will auto correct. That's Oh well, I guess, right? Sucks for me. But the held version is very limited. Because while you're doing the held version, you cannot move. And the held versions, well, since you can't move, that means the standing version, you are vulnerable to lows. The crouching version, you are vulnerable to overheads. So if I have any manner of inclination of what kind of shield you want to wake up with, if you want to wake up with a shield, if I know it's going to be an, you know, a standing or crouching one, I can definitely act appropriately. So if I know you're going to be waking up with a shield, you know, it's combo time, right? Because I'm going to hit you with the low and you can't stop it. So if we're in a situation where I know you're just going to be mashing crouching shield instead on your wake up, I'm going to go with a situation that's going to hit you overhead and I'm going to beat you up for that. So already we know a base version here is susceptible to left right stuff. It won't catch everything. And if you just do the tap version, by the way, it's punishable on its recovery, especially the lower you are on your moon gauge. And the standing versions and the crouching versions, well, they have their own crosses to bear, not the least of which is all of them, no matter how good you are with your shields, they're all throwable. I've seen a lot of people have issue with the fact that Wake Up Shield, well, at frame one can beat a lot of setups, right? And to that I say, you're overthinking it a little bit. Yes, if I toss my plant, for example, as Kohaku, right? If they just mass shield on Wake Up, they're gonna be able to shield the whole thing and just be safe. They don't gotta worry about that kind of stuff, right? To that, I just say, don't make it where you shield frame one. If I do this setup, I'm just gonna throw a dash, toss the plant, right? And yeah, the wake up shield, they still beat it. But since it wasn't frame one, oh, you wake up shield? Ah, I just threw you out of it. There you go, right? So if you're waking up and shielding, since the attack is not active yet, then I can still go for it, right? And at which point it doesn't really matter to the character, this is just a case example. I can also go for a low, an overhead or whatever. Uh, there is a specific moment here before whatever set play event goes live uh, before you can shield that I still get a little bit of a mix up. And of course, you know, if I try something a hit or throw and they just smash invincible reversal, I still get hit. Sure. Yes, absolutely. But in this scenario here, it takes away the wake up shield power of being able just to beat everything I'm going to do. To be sure, over the life of this game, the shield is probably going to be one of the more contentious things about the game, because it does a lot for a single button press. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot for a single button press. But there's definitely ways around it, ways to manipulate it, ways uh, to make people think it's a good option when it's not going to be a good option. So to that, I had to say, explore your options and see what you can do. And our final bit here of bonus forbidden tech. So if you are Hisui and Kohaku, the maid team specifically, if you do Kohaku's plant toss here and you're Hisui, what you want to do is water the plant. And if you water the plant, it turns it into this monstrosity that just attacks like a mad person here. So to water the plant, all you got to do is just hold back and B. And that special little glow here of your held special it will turn the plant into the monstrosity that you see. It's a little bit of a bonus. Uh, neither character can achieve this by themselves. It's only for the duo, but now you know. So those are some tips to help you out with Melty Blood type Lumina. Uh, once again, there is a more general beginner's guide linked at the end of the video if you want to know more about the game overall. And that said, I hope these tips have helped you out. There's definitely a lot to learn about this game. 
and we're going to be learning for a while to come. And that all said, my friends, we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Melty Blood.